Cronoid process fracture, anatomy, mechanism of injury, radiology, classification. The cronoid process provides anterior buttress against posterior subluxation or displacement. The radial head prevents valgus instability. The cronoid process prevents varus instability. The cronoid process also provides attachment for the anterior bundle of the MCL and the attachment to the anterior capsule. The anterior capsule attaches 6 mm distal to the tip of the cronoid. The anterior bundle of the medial collateral ligament attaches to the sublime tubercle 18 mm distal to the tip of the coronoid. You got to know the difference between insertion of the MCL and the insertion of the brachialis as you can see here in this diagram. If the fracture of the coronoid process tip is small, the brachialis should insert distal to the tip of the cronoid process. Mechanism of injury. There are two types for the mechanism of injury. A posterolateral rotatory displacement that will give us the terrible triad and you will have a fracture radial head, fracture coronoid tip in addition to dislocation of the elbow. And the other mechanism is varus and posteromedial rotatory displacement, which is associated with a fracture of the anteromedial coronoid process. Fracture of the radial head and coronoid process fracture of the tip call posterolateral rotatory displacement. The LCL tears from the humerus. The MCL may not be ruptured. In posterior elbow dislocation and posterolateral instability, the lateral side fails first, followed by the medial side fails last. This valgus and spination can result in the terrible triad. You will have a fracture radial head, fracture coronoid tip in addition to dislocation of the elbow. Patient with instability after elbow fracture dislocation always have a coronoid fracture and they can re-dislocate in a cast or after surgery. Exercise example. An elbow dislocation with type 2 coronoid fracture, a non-reconstructable comminuted radial head fracture. So how are you going to treat that? You're going to repair the lateral collateral ligament. You're going to do radial head arthroplasty. And you're going to do RIF of the coronoid. This is a terrible triad. Dislocation of the elbow, coronoid fracture, radial head fracture. We have to fix all these injuries. Address each injury to restore elbow stability. If you have an elbow dislocation, and olecranon tip fracture and radial head fracture, the likely pattern of instability is valgus posterolateral rotatory instability. The anterior medial coronoid fracture, varus and posteromedial rotation, rupture LCL from the humerus, varus force will cause medial facet fracture and this is the malignant fracture pattern. To recognize the posteromedial facet injury, look at the AP X-ray in addition to the lateral X-ray. In the lateral X-ray, you may miss it. Large medial coronoid fracture and the elbow dislocation, there probably will be various posteromedial rotatory instability. It will affect the anteromedial facet of the coronoid. Radiology. In fracture of the coronoid process, the X-ray is difficult to interpret. 
the fracture may be mistaken for a radial head fracture. The structures overlap and we may miss the fracture. In the lateral view, you may find a chip of bone. AP radiograph will find a non-dislocated elbow with an anteromedial coronoid fracture. If you miss the anteromedial coronoid fracture, you will get progressive narrowing of the joint space from lateral to medial between the medial trochlea and the coronoid. This entity, the anteromedial facet fracture that gives you posteromedial instability, occurs in conjunction with lateral collateral ligament injury. When you see this fracture, suspect anteromedial coronoid fracture, especially when you can find a radial head fracture. You may also find narrowing of the joint space between the medial trochlea and the coronoid process. CT scan is usually very helpful. Classification. There are two known classification systems. Reagan and Mori classification. The classification is based on viewing the lateral x-ray. Type 1, a shear fracture of the tip. Type 2, up to 50%. Type 3, more than 50%. This is a very simple classification system. The problem, it doesn't show the malignant fracture pattern. Odriscoll classification is very helpful, and it will show the anteromedial facet fracture, which will create posteromedial instability. Its classification is, as you see here, can be the tip, the anteromedial, or basal. Odriscoll classification recognized the anterior medial facet fracture caused by various posteromedial rotatory force. This fracture could be missed on the x-ray and can cause degenerative joint disease. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.